Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through them briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Camelot. We have an Anoto Magna Carta. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. We have a Visconti Daedalus. A Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stones in Sapphire Blue. We have a Scribo, and this is the Phil in the Verde Prato. We have a Visconti St. Basil. We have an Anoto British Museum Great Court. We have a Visconti Opera Master in the Antarctica. And we have a Visconti Opera Master Stardust. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is a very beautiful... Um, Visconti Camelot and this is a pen that uh, I never knew existed uh, but I was able to pick this up through a uh, very uh, close friend of mine who went to the Toronto pen show a number of years ago. Uh, this is uh, a quite a, an exquisite pen and like I said I never knew it existed until I actually saw photos of it uh, from the Toronto pen show and I saw it and I saw this uh, exquisite chainmail there on the pen and I just decided there and then I needed to add this to my collection. So a lot of pens I do add to my collection are literally just spur of the moment. I'll see a pen and I think I really need to add it. So uh, this is a lovely themed pen and a pen that uh, is close to me because Camelot obviously is in the UK and, and obviously the, the folklore uh, around uh, Camelot uh, so uh, this is uh, a pen that is actually quite uh, dear to my heart, actually. Uh, I do love this lovely chainmail that is going on there in this like herringbone effect. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I clean this pen? And there are a few little spots here that are maybe tarnishing slightly. But I don't actually clean it. I, I just leave it as it is. Uh, if if I, like with most of my pens, if I want to clean it, I just wipe it over with a microfiber cloth. I don't do anything more than that. I don't, in most cases, I don't polish a pen unless maybe it's solid silver and it's not got an aged look to it. Uh, it maybe like a yard of lead, for instance, which, which uh, I would polish. But the majority of these like silver like pens I do not polish. Now the beauty of this is uh, it is a power vac filler. Uh, it is a single reservoir. It has the older 18 karat gold nib from Visconti. It's a medium nib there. Lovely bounce to it. Really really lovely writer. Uh, the section is a little bit on the long side and a little bit on the thinner side for my liking. But when I actually start writing with it I do do love it. But I typically go with pens that do have a little bit of a shorter or certainly a, a more girthier section to it. The clip is functional as well, but it's not a like a, a standard clip. I personally wouldn't use it. I don't normally uh, kip, uh, clip um, pens into my shirt pocket or trouser pocket. Uh, I would... Because of the cost of my pens, I would much prefer to carry it in a uh, pen case. The next pen I have inked up this week is the Anoto Magna Carta. And again, another beautiful pen. Now this is made of solid silver, uh, AG95 sterling silver. It is a very weighty pen because of that. Uh, it does have this anodization done to it and engraving uh, to make it look uh, not like maybe regular silver AG925 would look like. Uh, it also has uh, this uh, lovely coin finial there on the cap. Uh, and it's just blank around the edges. You do have the uh, Anoto style clip there. And it does also say uh, Magna Carta and 1215. Uh, but you do have all of the... Uh, sort of hieroglyphs here or, or inscriptions 
that have come off of the original Magna Carta. And also on the body here as well, along with that coat of arms, uh, it is actually a really nice pen. Uh, I do now also have the Enoto Rosetta Stone as well. And uh, you will have seen my review of that. Uh, that has a lot more inscription on the body. Uh, I, I think if there was one takeaway that I would like from the Enoto Magna Carta, it would be to have a little bit more inscription on the body than it actually has. But I know that that would have driven the price up quite a bit as well, closer to that of the Rosetta Stone. Uh, if I unscrew the cap, um, it does have a number seven size Anoto nib. Now, the Anoto gold nibs actually are made by Bok. Uh, the seven or six size nibs, or even number eight, are designated by when the nib comes down into the section, it, it is de designated by the width of the uh, base of the nib. So a number six to a number seven size nib, you really only see a millimeter in, in difference, not a lot. Um, that's why you do see a little bit more of a difference in size of nibs between a number six and a number eight. Uh, I do typically find this is a little bit more like a number six size nib, uh, certainly uh, in terms of the width of the nib here uh, across the, the shoulders of the nib. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Um, it's not designed to post. Similarly, the Camelot also is not designed to post as well. Uh, these, When you get to pens like this, they typically do not post. So if you are a cap poster, bear that in mind because uh, not all pens will post. The next pen here uh, I have inked up is uh, the Visconti. And this is the last Templar and it is Jacques de Molay. And uh, a beautiful pen. Um, it, it is a Knight's Templar pen uh, that you can see here. Beautiful pen. Again, exquisite chainmail. Uh, it's not chainmail links as such, like uh, that on the Camelot. It, the chainmail doesn't go all the way through. So it's more of a, just a design uh, here. But it still is a very, very nice pen. Uh, it is a long pen. And it is a power vac, a uh, single reservoir, but you do have this power vac chalice knob there. Uh, so that uh, is an interesting uh, take on this, just to add a little bit more sort of uh, sort of texture, I guess, to the pen. Um, it does come with a uh, little bit of a frosted nib there because it is a bit cold. A number six size Visconti nib. It's a 23 cap palladium medium nib does come with a white feed although unfortunately white feeds will uh, over time become a little bit uh, dull and and uh, inkified or colored so um, that's something to bear in mind as well uh, it is a power vac filler so holds around about one and a half milliliters of ink but that is a very nice pen and i do have that one inked up this week as well the next pen here is a visconti daedalus I always wanted one of these, and like with most pens that we buy, you have a price limit, uh, and the same was really with the Jacques de Molay and, and also the Enoto Magna Carta, and you don't really want to go over that price limit. But now and again, somebody will make an offer, uh, an offer that you can't refuse, or maybe you will find a pen which is being offered at a really good price. And that's exactly what happened with uh, this Daedalus here. So uh, it, it is a very beautiful pen. Uh, Daedalus, you, you've basically got the Minotaur mazes here and uh, Daedalus there, inscription. And then you've also got the Minotaur head there as well. Uh, very, very lovely pen. I have to say, I really like that I've added this to my collection. It does have a lot of sparkles in the blue resin uh, you can probably see it there that they will sparkle quite a bit it's a really really interesting pen um, it is a power vac it's a double reservoir uh, you've got the uh, Visconti number six size 23 cap palladium medium nib there can you post the cap you can however this cap is very heavy so it really feels very back weighted I wouldn't want to post the cap 
but you might want to. Uh, but I, I would find I would have difficulty writing with it if I posted that cap. I think. The next pen I have inked up is uh, a Visconti Homo Sapiens. And this is the Demo Stones in the Sapphire Blue. And you can see that there because it has a blue uh, My Pen finial there. It's not a gemstone, which is a shame. Uh, I, I think Visconti missed the boat a little bit there. But saying that, it probably would have increased the price if it was a proper gemstone. Uh, it is a demonstrator pen. It is a power vac filler. It is also a double reservoir. Um, it is a, a blue uh, semi-translucent pen. It has the newer 14 karat gold number six size Visconti nib there. And that is a medium nib. Uh, also has the hook safe lock mechanism there as well. And you can post the cap if you want to. Uh, again, I, I'm not a cap poster, but you can do on this one. You do have to be a little bit careful, though, because you are posting it on that knob. If you twist that and then pull it out, it's going to obviously pull out the whole of the power vac mechanism in readiness to prime it with ink. So do be a little bit careful there. The next pen inked up is the Scribo Fill in the Verde Prato. I know I've had this inked up in uh, in past weeks. Uh, beautiful pen. Uh, it has this hourglass-like effect going on between the cap and the body. Plus, it has all these facets as well. And I have to say, it is a, a very comfortable pen in my hand. I didn't think it ever would be. But when I tried one in person, I really did like it. Uh, you do have a... Uh, again, it is faceted here as well. It's not round, although it does look a little bit more rounded. But it is a good size in my hand. Again, it's not a pen that you can really post the cap on. But it is quite a long pen. Uh, it does have the uh, 14 karat gold Scribo Extra Flex nib. And this is uh, really the same as the Omas Extra Flesser Bile nibs. So it's a 14 karat gold medium nib with an ebonite feed there as well. Um, which really helps uh, the ink to flow. Um, I find it's a very, very wet writing nib, and I do love writing with it. The next pen here inked up, again, is a pen that I've had inked up for a few weeks. It's the Visconti St. Basil, and I absolutely love this celluloid. And I'm going to have to actually uh, ink up my original pen that I had, very similar to this, which was the Visconti Speakeasy. And the Visconti Speakeasy is identical, except for doesn't have this uh, elaborate cap band, and it doesn't have this gold insert or inlay there of St. Basil. Uh, but it is almost identical. Uh, this one does actually come with a red ruby, whereas the Speakeasy did not. Uh, but I have actually put a red uh, My Pen finial on there uh, to make it look a little bit similar. Um, I love this pen. I also love my Speakeasy as well. But I do like this pen. I like this a little bit more because it is a power vac filler. Speakeasy is really a cartridge only or a very small Caveco squeeze converter. Now, this is a celluloid material, and you can see the double reservoir there. Um, it does come with a number six size Visconti nib, and that is a medium nib there, 23 cap palladium nib. Writes very, very well. I do like this a lot. Uh, the celluloid, uh, it is celluloid. It's not resin. It's not ebonite. This is a beautiful red, blue, black, a little bit of purple uh, celluloid. Absolutely stunning. I do like it a lot. Uh, you can see the end there as well. Um, it's a beautiful pen. Uh, very big pen. Very chunky pen. But a pen that I enjoy writing with. So... I decided I would uh, keep that one inked up this week. Another pen that I've had inked up for a number of weeks on and off is the uh, Noto, and this is the British Museum Great Court. And you can see here it says the British Museum, uh, and uh, it is the Great Court. So if you've been to the British Museum, you'll know this. If you haven't, you may not know unless you've seen photos. It has this lovely domed window ceiling where you can actually gaze at the stars 
So this actually depicts that. Uh, and the actual ceiling is actually got a number of like diamonds. It made, it's made up of like this like diamond shaped glass. Uh, so that's really what the uh, enamel here is. It's a uh, solid silver or uh, sterling AG925 uh, silver. So it's a heavy pen, just like the uh, Nota Magna Carta. It's about 95 grams in weight. Uh, but it has this uh, enamel uh, on it instead. Beautiful pen. Really do love this pen. I love writing with it. It really is a beautiful pen. Uh, like the Anota Magna Carta, it is a cartridge converter pen. Comes with a number seven size. Uh, and this is a fine nib here. Uh, a Noto nib. And as I mentioned, the Noto nibs are, the gold nibs are made by Bok. Uh, can I post the cat? No. Again, it's not designed to do so uh, you can kind of see a little bit of a theme going here a lot more the more expensive pens uh, you don't seem to be able to post the caps you can't post the cap on the uh, uh, St Basil either so and you can find this on cheaper pens as well it's not just expensive pens but you will find that there are a lot of pens certainly the more exquisitely designed pens that would just will not post the cap the next pen uh, I have inked up, and I have it, had this inked up for a few weeks, is the Visconti Opera Master, and it is the Antarctica. I absolutely love this pen. Uh, I did win it in an auction. I don't normally bid on auctions, because uh, I normally find that they go way above what I want to pay. But I won this auction, and I also won an auction on uh, the Visconti Opera Master Savannah as well. Uh, and, and I won that towards the end of 2022. Really, really beautiful, beautiful um, pen. I love how white uh, the whites are. Uh, very beautiful swirls there. Um, really is a stunning pen. Uh, it is uh, an Opera Master, although the newer Opera Masters have this hook safe lock mechanism on them, uh, not a screw metal screw thread. Uh, it's got the newer Visconti in-house 18 karat gold nib. Uh, this is a medium nib, but it writes a little bit more sort of like a, a medium or a f to a fine. Uh, it is a very interesting pen. Uh, it's a Paravac. It's a double reservoir. Uh, and I do, do like writing with that a lot. And then the next pen is, again, another Visconti Opera Master. I've not written with this for a little while now. I decided I would bring it back out. This is a uh, Truffet exclusive. So Truffet, uh, if you're not aware, is a retailer in the US. And uh, I used to buy a lot of pens from Chris, a lot of Visconti's from Chris at Truffet. And this was one of his, uh, one of two of his exclusives that came at the same time. And this is the Opera Master Stardust. I really, really do like this uh, material. It really is like really space. It's with lots and lots of, of beautiful stars uh, with a ruthenium trim as well. Now, um, you'll see there it, it is a limited edition and that is 7 of 28. So there are only 28 of these are made uh, worldwide. Again, it, it has got the older screw thread. It is a power back. It's a double reservoir. I've got that locked off at the moment comes with a ruthenium colored uh, uh, trim uh, section and nib and it's the older Visconti uh, 23 cap palladium nibs and this is a stub nib so 1.3 stub so you can really see how thick that or wide that nib is there uh, very beautiful uh, you can post the cap it will post onto that power back knob again though I'm not a, a cap poster and I do worry about scratching uh, the the ruthenium plating. A lot of the plating on pens is not that thick. So over time, uh, you could scratch that off, especially seeing that you have threads in the cap there as well. So for me, I, I'm not normally a cap poster, uh, but some of you are, so... I always try to show you if you can or cannot post the cap where possible. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen inked up is the Visconti Camelot. 
So I think let's go and do a uh, ink swatch first. Now there's a number of inks that I normally ink this pen up with. Now one of them is Diamine Earl Grey. But I figured I wouldn't ink it up with Diamine Earl Grey because I've got a couple of other pens inked up with that this week. So this is the uh, Visconti Camelot. And it is a uh, medium and it's the older 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. And then the ink in here is Mont Blanc. And it is a lavender purple, which is a very nice ink. And I do find that this actually writes exquisitely well with lavender purple. So uh, I decided that I would ink that up uh, this week. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Carter. So we'll do a, an ink swatch again. And this, you can see, though, is a grey coloured ink. Although, it is a very dark grey colour. So, almost virgining on black, but not quite black. So, this is the Anoto Magna Carta. And uh, this has a fine, uh, and again, it's an 18 count gold nib. Uh, both uh, the Visconti and the Anoto nibs are made by Bok. And uh, the ink in here is exactly Diamine Earl Grey. Um, but you can see really that um, the difference between line variation. I always I also find quite a difference between how firm this nib is compared to the Visconti Camelot nib. It is more of a rigid nib, this one. The next pen ink top is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. So we'll do an ink swatch on this one as well. Now, this also uh, is, well, this is a medium nib, whereas the previous uh, Anoto was a fine nib. Um, but it is using the same ink. So you will see a huge difference here in terms of the color. So this is the Visconti and this is the uh, last Templar Jacques de Malay uh, and it is a uh, medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib uh, and then the ink in here is Diamine Earl Grey uh, but I know a number of you have suggested that I should maybe try uh, a red ink in here uh, purely really just to show off the red here on the cross um, I as much as I would like to uh, it does have a white feed and uh, I am a little bit more concerned that that white feed uh, will probably stain red or pink so um, as much as I would like to I think I probably will actually just stick with the gray ink on uh, the uh, Visconti uh, Jacques de Molay might even go for a black ink, although the grey, I think the black might make it a little bit more darker white, so or an off-white, darker grey uh, feed colour. So I think probably sticking with a grey is probably better. Grey also flushes out nice and easy as well. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Daedalus. So we'll do an ink swatch. And uh, this is a medium nib. It's also, uh, strangely enough, a 23 cap palladium nib. Now, the majority of my 23 cap palladium nibs are actually very bouncy. There were a few that are a little bit more on the stiffer side. This is one of them. Uh, so this is the uh, Visconti Daedalus. And a lot of people complained when they uh, got stiff 23 cap palladium nibs because the whole idea that was being sold was a, a nice bouncy springy uh, almost like 14 count gold flex nib um, and depending on the batches that Bok made for Visconti it could actually differ quite a lot so this is more of a harder version uh, and uh, this is a, a medium as I said 23 cap palladium nib and I think the reason why is that on some of the batches they were a little bit too bouncy and springy and would spring 
the times. So I believe, at least as I understand it, I do not know firsthand or secondhand, um, but as I understand it, that Visconti and Dante Del Vecchio had asked for them to be made a little bit more stiffer. Uh, and, and maybe that was the result of this. So they didn't spring as quickly. Uh, the ink in here is uh, the lovely Visconti Blue, which uh, is a very um, uh, punchy blue, uh, mid sort of blue. Kind of reminds me a little bit towards uh, Noodler's Base State Blue, but it's a darker blue. Uh, but it is a blue that, that I uh, do like writing with if I want to go to a what I, I would call a traditional blue. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stones in Sapphire Blue. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is the kind of blue that I typically like more now. It's really more of a caribbean style water sort of turquoisey blue so this is the visconti homo sapiens and um i'm actually going to open the power vac because i've got the power vac locked off and i'm seeing that it's starting to dry out a little bit there uh and it's the uh, demo stones in sapphire and uh, it is a medium and it's a 14 cat gold nib from Visconti and then the ink in here is uh, Visconti turquoise and I have actually seen it in some pens a little bit more lighter than this one uh, but I have to say that Visconti turquoise uh, I it really does appeal to me it's a lovely lovely turquoisey blue colored ink the next pen inked up is a scribo fill in the verde prato so we'll do a, an ink swatch here oh and it's starting to run out let me prime the piston so let's try this again there you go it was actually dry i just had to very quickly just refill it there. So this is the uh, Scrivo fill in the uh, Verde Prato. And uh, it is a um, medium and it is the uh, Extra Flexibile or Extra Flex 14 count gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is Ackermann. And I will apologize, but this is a, a Dutch Masters, and my pronunciation is terrible, I know. Uh, Van Hoysum's Sapgroon. But I, I have to say, though, even though my, my uh, pronunciation is terrible on that, uh, the ink color is is a beautiful, beautiful sort of green little bit sort of light grassy green to olivey green I would say the next pen inked up is the Visconti St Basil so again we'll do an ink swatch here and just get that pen started I'm actually going to open the power vac knob just to let a bit more of that ink down because uh, I see uh, it may dry up otherwise um, I do typically write with my pens locked off uh, to stop the ink flow. So you do have to open them now and again. So this is the Visconti St. Basil. Um, and it is a uh, medium and it's a 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy red but that is a very very beautiful red ink uh and i will probably have to refill that very soon or i think probably clean it out because i've had it inked up for a little while now the next pen inked up is the anoto british museum great court so we'll do another ink swatch here 
And I mentioned about the, the blue inks earlier on and liking the blue turquoisey colored ink of uh, Visconti turquoise. Uh, this is a little bit more of a favorite, I would say, to me now. Um, it, it is very, very similar, if not almost identical. Um, so this is the Anoto, and it's the British Museum. Great Courts. Oops. And this one is going to be running out as well. Um, uh, it is uh, a fine, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Um, and then the uh, ink in here is uh, Venvustus Aqua de Spargi. But I will, uh, I do like writing with this pen, so I will most likely ink that one back up. Uh, it may or may not actually appear in the next currently inked video, though. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Antarctica. So we'll do another ink swatch here. Now, this is uh, a medium nib, but I do find it writes more like a fine nib. Um, I'm also, uh, I'm going to open up the uh, power back knob on this one as well, because I think I have almost exhausted the double reservoir of ink there. So I'm just going to open that up a little bit. Uh, so this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master. And uh, it's the Antarctica. Now, uh, this is a medium nib and it's an 18 cat gold in-house nib from Visconti. Uh, and then the ink in here is uh, Visconti Turquoise. So um, you will see the difference between these two inks. And I say you will see the difference, you probably won't actually, because the uh, inks are pretty similar once dried. Um, I, I've had a, uh, a few comments recently again saying, why do I write in uppercase in caps in block capitals? Why am I not writing in cursive? Uh, I did on some of my earlier County Ink videos actually write in cursive. And some people said they couldn't read it. And then I switched to all caps. And then some people said they couldn't read it. So uh, I want you to try and read uh, the the names here of the inks and also the pens. So I do typically write uh, these currently inked uh, and also the, the ink comparison videos in caps so that you can have a better idea of reading those. And then the last pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Stardust. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now this is uh, a, a very broad uh, writing nib. It's a stub nib. So this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master and it's the uh, Stardust. And uh, it is a 1.3 millimeter stub nib. It's the 23 cat palladium nib from Visconti. And then the ink in here is a diamine Merlot. Um, but you can see here, uh, these are five millimeter grids. So it, with a stub nib, becomes quite difficult, even with caps, to try and write between five millimeter. Uh, and you can see that like, if I do that that is uh, how thick those lines are so i think let's take a look at these uh, pens inked up one more time so we have a visconti caronot in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with mont blanc corn uh, mont blanc lavender purple we have a anoto magna carta in a fine 18 cat gold nib inked up with darmine earl gray we have a visconti last templar jacques de malay in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with diamine earl grey and you can see the difference there between the colours. We have a Visconti Daedalus in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti blue. We have a Visconti Homo sapiens demo stones in sapphire blue in a medium 14 cap gold nib inked up with Visconti turquoise and you can see that that is a lot lighter than 
Visconti Blue. We have a Scribo Phil in the Verde Prato in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Ackerman Dutch Masters Van Hoysen Sap Grand. We have a Visconti St. Basil in a medium 23 count Palladium nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. We have an Anoto British Museum Great Court in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with Venvistus Aqua di Spargi. We have a Visconti Opera Master Antarctica in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Visconti Turquoise. And then we have a Visconti Opera Master Stardust in a 1.3mm stub 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Merlot. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.